TA Chief Whip Sivue Kwahube joins us now uh, for the party's reaction. Sivue, good evening and thank you very much for your time. You had initially thought uh, maybe the, the rules of the Section 89 uh, panel were limiting, but it seems uh, they were not limited at all. They went further uh, than what uh, you would have uh, uh, anticipated they would go. Uh, what do you make of the uh, initial uh, recommendations coming from the panel? Yeah, good evening, uh, Tabo, and good evening to your viewers. Yes, um, look, we are, uh, we would really be surprised and uh, pleasantly so um, that, in fact, the panel was able to look deeper um, into the responses of the president and what was available in the public domain because we were always of the view that what was in the public domain and the inability of the panel to be able to subpoena other witnesses and the like would limit their scope and their work. But we've noted the outcome of the, um, of the, of the panel and the recommendations. And Tabo, they are quite serious. I mean, um, we have never in our democratic, in democratic South Africa had an independent panel finding that a president has or may have violated sections of the Constitution. This is extremely instructive. It's extra instructive particularly to Parliament. And now this is where I think the nub of the issue is going to come, Tabo, because now that the report has been made public and the recommendations are out there, it now puts the responsibility on Parliament. Parliament now needs to, in the next couple of days, put together a motion that will serve before the House uh, at our last parliamentary sitting of the year, which I suspect probably will not be anymore, uh, on the 6th, which is the, the Tuesday next week, where the House will now have to vote uh, on whether or not they accept the recommendations of the panel to institute um, impeachment proceedings against the president. And here is the, 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 the difficulty, Tambo, because... As I said, this is the first time it has ever happened in our democratic uh, dispensation. And we would really hope that in the similar vein that this panel conducted its work in an independent, impartial manner um, and essentially found without fear or favor against a sitting president, that the ANC in Parliament would understand the gravity of the moment. The reality is that never has a sitting president been found to have been a violated of the Constitution. It would really boggle my mind if we would get to Parliament on Tuesday and the ANC would vote against instituting a parliamentary inquiry, uh, 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 an impeachment inquiry against the president. It would really, for me, spell that the, spell in clear uh, terms that in fact the ANC has long given up on constitutionalism yeah. um, as, as, as an organization. Is the president himself uh, reflecting seriously on this, judging by his statement? He says, the conclusions of the panel require careful reading and appropriate consideration in the interest of the stability of government and that of the country. Look, I mean, I think it's important to note that, like, I mean, we, we cannot be held hostage by ANC political machinations. That's why we have a constitution. And if the president has broken um, sections of the constitution or contravened sections of, of the constitution, then we can't, in the interest of stability of the republic, um, simply overlook that. And so I think I find that uh, those that utterance um, rather suspect. But the president has committed to addressing the nation tomorrow, I think. Um, and so it will be quite interesting to hear from him exactly what he intends to do. But I, I also do note that he disputes almost the findings of the uh, of the of the of the panel. Oh yeah, no, he does. He says speech. I categorically deny that I have violated the oath in any way, yeah. and I similarly yeah. deny that I'm guilty of any of the allegations uh, made against me. So I ask you the and question: Do you think uh, before a Tuesday? Well, I suppose tomorrow he might still show up at the NCOP. But do you think before the debate on Tuesday, the president would have resigned? Look, I mean, it's difficult to say. Probably not, Tabo. If I was a gambling woman, which I'm not, um, I, would, I would say probably not. 
Um, but at the end of the day, remember that this is a parliamentary process. So and so, you know, the president's feelings aside, the reality is that now a parliamentary process has found him who may have violated the constitution. And so regardless of what his assertions may be, and the panel gave him an an, an, an opportunity to present his case, which we've seen his uh, lengthy submission to them. Um, they gave them him a, an opportunity to present his case, and in spite of that, or despite that it, that that submission, and despite him saying to them that I don't think that you should continue with this work, or that I don't think you should find me guilty, um, and that these are spurious uh, allegations, they still found him to um to make to you know possibly having violated the constitution and that's not something to scoff at and that's why i'm saying that our, all eyes now shift to parliament because regardless of what the president believes or whether he resigns or he steps down or he steps aside according to his party policies now parliament has to do its work because we elect the president and if indeed the president is impeachable we need to impeach him uh, as per the constitution and the rules. That's precisely what is, is, is serious about this, that a panel with such a limited scope and uh, purely relying on evidence that has been submitted by uh, members of the uh, National Assembly could reach this. Uh, what do you think would have uh, come up in the investigations, for example, that have been done by the Hawks, who have much more extended investigative uh, ability, and they say they've received close to 68, I think, uh, uh, statements so far on the Pala Pala matter. Uh, do you think they would have even discovered more than what uh, we're talking about now? I think so in, entirely. I mean, you recall a couple of months ago we had uh, requested Parliament to to establish an ad hoc committee because we believe that with an ad hoc committee we'll be able to uh, subpoena and summon um, state institutions like the South African Reserve Bank, like SARS, uh, you know, like the Presidential Protection Unit, and all of these institutions that are seemingly um, implicated in the scandal. And we were of the view that if we have that and the evidence that will flow from that, we can then move on to a Section 89 inquiry. But the fact that, as you say, the panel, in spite of the fact that they don't have all this information, was able to reach this conclusion, tells me that, well, there's a lot more um, the present that has to answer for. I think, and and this is why we had said that even if the panel does not find against him, we will not hesitate to reapproach Parliament again to say that an ad hoc committee still must be established. Because, of course, this is not just about the president alone. There's cabinet ministers who are implicated. There's a whole network of people who would have been involved in this. Uh, but, of course, now that the panel has found against him, now we've got to focus, because, of course, impeachment proceedings have far-reaching consequences. I mean, if a president is impeached, Tabo, the entire cabinet goes. Mm. Um, and in, essentially, the entire government falls. Uh, and so now we focus on this. Uh, but, you know, it just shows you that even if the panel hadn't found against the president, we would have still pursued this because our view is that this thing really spreads far and wide. Sibiru Kwahube, much appreciated. Thanks uh, for coming on uh, tonight. That's uh, DA Chief Whip uh, in Parliament.